Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in fitness, and that is hypertrophy periodization. Whether you actually need to periodize your training for hypertrophy and how to do it optimally is a debated topic in hypertrophy science. But I do have some perspectives on this that I want to share today, and there are some potential benefits that I can see for bodybuilders. Periodization has been defined in a few ways, but you can look at it as the manipulation of variables in your program in order to produce optimal performance on a given date. This is typically in the context of sports. However, for a bodybuilder, you still can look at periodization in terms of optimizing your hypertrophy on an ongoing basis. So even if you aren't necessarily a competitive bodybuilder and have a certain day that you need to look best on, you still can apply these principles. Okay, we'll start off by talking about the mechanisms of hypertrophy because this will inform a lot of our discussion. Next, we'll talk about a couple of the drivers that make us think about periodization, in particular, adaptive resistance and phase potentiation. Then we'll talk about the benefits of periodization for bodybuilders. And finally, we'll give you some concrete examples of how you can implement periodization in your own training strategy. The first strategy we'll talk about is conjugate periodization, and then we'll talk about block periodization. The first thing we should talk about when it comes to hypertrophy periodization is mechanisms of hypertrophy. And according to our current understanding based on the scientific literature, there are three main mechanisms. First of all, mechanical tension. This is the main driver of hypertrophy. And you can roughly think about this as the force generated by your muscle fibers during exercise. It's important to understand that basically all rep ranges will create some degree of mechanical tension. You're generating mechanical tension when you perform a 1RM, but you're also getting mechanical tension if you're doing a set of say 30 reps. You will get more tension per rep doing the 1RM, but you also will get more reps doing the higher rep work. So there is some nuance to this. Next we have metabolic stress. And the idea here is that you get a hypertrophic effect from the metabolites that build up around training. When you perform hard training, especially hypertrophy type training, you will generate metabolites like lactate. You can roughly think about this as the burn you get at the end of your sets. Note that there are techniques you can use to particularly try and emphasize this metabolic stress pathway. In particular, using higher reps, like higher than 12 reps per set, and using various intensity techniques like drop sets and my reps can encourage the metabolic stress pathway. Finally, we have muscle damage, and this is basically the damage that's incurred by your muscles when you perform hard work. You can roughly think about muscle damage as the soreness you get after a hard session. Now, there are some techniques you can use to emphasize muscle damage, but I don't think these are very productive for hypertrophy because of the recovery cost. The other thing I want to point out is you'll notice I've drawn these two-way arrows, and that's because when you generate mechanical tension, you are always going to generate some degree of metabolic stress and muscle damage anyways. For example, if you do a heavy set of 10 on squats, you're going to produce a lot of mechanical tension, but you're also going to get metabolic stress and muscle damage. So you can't necessarily see these concepts as completely separate. Now, note that while mechanical tension is our main driver of hypertrophy, you can have this avenue of metabolic stress that you can capitalize on. This is going to be key in our hypertrophy periodization strategies we'll talk about later. Okay, next let's talk about adaptive resistance and phase potentiation. These are important concepts for us to understand because they will drive our need for periodization. Adaptive resistance is the tendency for the body to eventually stop changing if exposed to the same stimulus for long enough. A lot of people who just use unweighted calisthenics will run into this problem of adaptive resistance. Think about a person who always does three sets of 30 push-ups in their workout for their chest training. At the beginning, that is going to be a novel stimulus and it will stimulate some hypertrophy. But eventually the body will grow enough in size and strength so that 30 push-ups for three sets is no longer a challenge. Once you get to this state, the body will stop adapting because it doesn't need to, and thus your results will stall. Now this can actually apply to a number of different variables in hypertrophy training. This is a big reason why we need progressive overload or the increase in our stimulus over time. It can also apply to other aspects of our training program. We talked about our three mechanisms of hypertrophy and I mentioned how you can specifically emphasize metabolic stress. One of the problems with metabolite focused training blocks, however, is that if you're always training in a high rep range and really focusing on metabolic stress, your body tends to adapt to this and gets better at clearing those metabolites. So if you are always relying on really, really high reps or a lot of drop sets to get your stimulus, you will eventually get diminishing returns from using those techniques. Now the solution for adaptive resistance is switching over your tactics in order to resensitize yourself to that stimulus. Looking at training volume and deloads is an example of this. Say if you're training your back with 15 sets per week, at some point after a number of weeks of training like that, your body is going to adapt to those 15 sets per week. You will eventually run into adaptive resistance. When you take a deload and you drop your volume significantly, say dropping it to half, you are resensitizing yourself to that volume stimulus. So then when you come 
come back to 15 sets per week later, you're gonna be able to renew your progress. Next concept is phase potentiation. And this is the ability of one phase to prime you for better results in the next. One example of phase potentiation here that will apply to our hypertrophy periodization talk is the idea that building strength can prime you for better hypertrophy training later on. The idea is that if you spend time building strength, you will increase the amount of weight you're able to lift for each rep. Thus, for your training in later blocks, you'll be able to perform more effective volume for every set, particularly if you look at volume from the perspective of sets times reps times weight lifted. And looking at things from a mechanistic standpoint, if you increase your strength, you'll be able to produce more mechanical tension in later blocks. This will have impact in our planning when we start thinking about ordering our phases of training, particularly if you wanted to use a block style periodization. Start off with a strength block where you focus on strength gains could potentially prime you for better hypertrophy in later blocks. Okay, let's talk about the benefits of periodization. I'll start this off by underlining how this talk is specifically directed towards more advanced individuals, like at least intermediate and beyond. If you're a beginner, you don't really need to think too much about more complicated forms of periodization. But at an advanced level, I do think that periodization can help to optimize your rate of progress, which is our first benefit. Now looking at the science we have, it's controversial as to how much periodization actually will help. But I do think that there is going to be some small incremental improvement in your rate of progress overall for an advanced athlete. I think that this is going to be very difficult to actually prove scientifically. So it's gonna be a long time till we actually have a solid answer. Next benefit of periodization for hypertrophy is to minimize the risk of overuse injuries. I think this is actually one of the biggest advantages of periodization and it's one of the main reasons why I think it's important. At a high level, chronic injuries are gonna be the main thing stopping you from reaching your genetic potential. And knowing that you can switch up training variables and vary your program across the months can really help you to avoid injuries and deal with aches and pains. Next benefit of periodization is that it can help you to develop particular adaptations. At a beginner level, power building or building strength and hypertrophy simultaneously is very possible. But at a higher level, it's gonna be difficult to optimize your ability to build strength and hypertrophy at the same time. Having dedicated strength for example, could help you to bring up your numbers. Finally, with periodization, you could take advantage of the resensitization effect. When we talked about adaptive resistance, we used the example of training volume, where if you were using 15 sets of back for long enough, you'd become resistant to that stimulus and you'd stop growing. But when you take a deload week, you resensitize yourself to that stimulus of volume and you renew your progress when you come back to it. The evidence for resensitization is not very strong at this point in terms of actually improving your overall gains. However, it does suggest that intelligent use of this concept can allow you to use less training to get the same amount of gains. When we look at that example of the back training and the deload, when you use that deload, you're effectively taking a bit of a break from the gym. But since it resensitizes you to come back to training and get a better stimulus when you come back, this makes up for the time you didn't spend training during that deload week. And I think this is actually a very important indirect advantage of periodization. If you can still get the same results with slightly less time spent training, I think it's actually a big win from a sustainability perspective. I think it's important to think about trying to get the optimal results with the least amount of effort possible. Because you really want to think about bodybuilding as a lifetime pursuit. A lot of people get into bodybuilding and they hammer away at the gym for a few years and then they give it up. With intelligent programming and periodization, you can minimize the impact training has on your life and that will help with your longevity in fitness. Okay, now that we understand our fundamental concepts, let's get into a couple of strategies for long-term periodization. And note that we're talking about the long time scales here, like periodizing over months. So we're not necessarily talking about week by week, which would be more mesocycle design. First strategy I wanna talk about is the conjugate strategy. And this is basically where you try and develop all qualities simultaneously. In other words, you're combining your strength, traditional hypertrophy, and metabolic training year round. You can basically think about this as not periodizing at all because you're trying to include some elements of strength, traditional hypertrophy, and metabolic training all together. I'm gonna to refer to traditional hypertrophy work as training in the six to 12 rep range, strength work as training in the heavy one to five rep range, and metabolic training as including higher rep ranges like 12 to 20 reps or 20 to 30 reps, as well as metabolic techniques like drop sets, my reps, and blood flow restriction training. An easy rule of thumb to help you plan this is to have roughly two thirds of your training lying in the six to 12 rep range, and then one third of your training outside of that rep range. This will vary depending on the muscle group, and six to 12 is not a hard and fast number. 
But for example, if you were doing 15 sets for a muscle group per week, you could have 10 of those sets falling in the six to 12 rep range. So that's two thirds of 15. And then the other third of 15 or five sets you could spend on strength and metabolic work. For example, having two heavy sets per week in the one to five rep range and three sets in the 12 to 20 rep range. You could also add a couple drop sets at the end of your last set of the day for a certain muscle group in order to get a bit more of that metabolic effect. The conjugate strategy is a great way to go and is actually what I recommend for most people starting out. The reason is that if you're able to, you can develop all qualities simultaneously and thus get the maximum development of all adaptations. If you're able to get good strength gains just by doing a few heavy sets per week, you don't need a dedicated strength block in order to develop those strength adaptations. But if you're more advanced, you may want to consider thinking about more complex periodization like block periodization. Let's talk about that now. Okay, now let's talk about our block periodization strategy. A block periodization strategy is basically where you have dedicated phases directed towards certain adaptations and it's the most formal form of periodization. I'll be showing you a few examples of how you might want to implement this and why it might work. In our first example, we have a strength block, hypertrophy block, and metabolite block. Let's talk about what these blocks mean. In a strength block, you're gonna be specifically trying to bring up your strength in your main squat, hip hinge, pushing, and pulling movements. This will involve more work in that low one to five rep range. Note that you're still gonna be including work in higher rep ranges. You'll just be shifting a bit more towards that strength work. And of course, since we're still looking at hypertrophy, you'll still include direct training for your arms and smaller muscle groups like side delts. One thing to point out here is that for a more advanced athlete, they may actually need a strength dedicated phase to bring up their squat, bench, and deadlift. Next, the hypertrophy block is going to be our main workhorse, and this is where you're focusing more on that six to 12 rep range. Finally, in a metabolite block, you're gonna be specifically trying to access that metabolic stress pathway for hypertrophy. Here, you'll be utilizing more higher rep work like the 12 to 20 and 20 to 30 rep range, as well as other metabolite techniques like drop sets, myo reps, and blood flow restriction training. Let's look at how these knit together. This is gonna be based off of a four week meso cycle. So you'll start off with a strength block where you do two four week meso cycles. Then you'll go onto your hypertrophy block where you do three four week meso cycles. And finally, you'll have your metabolite block, which is one four week meso cycle. When we start off with a strength block, the idea is that we're using phase potentiation to improve our results in the following phases. By increasing your strength in this first block, you're gonna be able to generate more mechanical tension in your hypertrophy and metabolite blocks and hopefully more gains. Your hypertrophy block is going to be your main bread and butter. And here, hopefully you'll be capitalizing on the strength you built during that strength block. And finally, our metabolite block is going to allow us to access that metabolic stress pathway. At this point, this will be somewhat of a novelty stimulus since you aren't used to using these metabolite techniques. Also, the metabolite block helps us to avoid and work around chronic overuse injuries. Lighter weights and higher reps tends to be easier on your connective tissues. Finally, when we're using this metabolite block, this will resensitize us to our more heavier type training that we'll bring back later on. Here's another example that's a little simpler. Here we have a hypertrophy block, which is gonna be two to four four-week muscle cycles, followed by a metabolite block, which is one four-week muscle cycle. Note that in this example, in your hypertrophy block, you are going to still include some strength training, but you don't have a dedicated strength phase. The advantage of this strategy over the last one is that you're not dedicating as much time to strength training. For an advanced bodybuilder, if you're trying to focus on strength training, you may not get as good hypertrophy during that strength block. So for an advanced athlete, there actually is somewhat of a time cost when implementing strength-oriented blocks. This is why bodybuilding and powerlifting ultimately diverge as you get more advanced. Here, you're gonna spend most of your time in a hypertrophy block, but you will occasionally use metabolite blocks, which will give you all the advantages we spoke about earlier. And this is the general strategy that I currently use. However, I wanna point out here that things don't have to be as rigid as they might seem on this example. An important concept is that periodization can apply to different muscle groups running at different times simultaneously. So for example, I'm currently dealing with tendinosis of my quadriceps tendon. So to deal with that, I'm implementing a metabolite block for my quads. I'm using a lot of higher rep work and blood flow restriction training. This way, I'm still able to get good hypertrophy gains for my quads while working around aches and pains. Pains. However, simultaneously, I'm still using quite a bit of heavy work for my chest training, for example. So to some degree, you can think about periodization as applying to different muscle groups separately. Of course, there will be some crosstalk between muscle groups that both get involved in certain exercise patterns. If you want to really get into depth into hypertrophy periodization, check out my book, Advanced Hypertrophy Periodization, which is the first book dedicated to this topic for bodybuilders. I think this is an underrated topic, and I do think there are some benefits for advanced athletes. If you want to learn how to design 
design a mesocycle, cycle, check out this video where I show you how to build your mesocycle cycle one week at a time. If you got value from this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.